Folks, I want to talk about heart disease. And my history in this business, this part, this heart disease part, sort of makes me a little crazy. I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I've been working in the emergency room as a volunteer since I'm 13 years old. I've been a paramedic working on heart patients for years. I developed new treatment protocols for cardiologists, and still nobody's paying attention. Heart disease is not from cholesterol. Heart disease is not from a high-fat diet. That whole paradigm is changing, which we knew for a lot of years. When your arteries get blocked, it's multifactorial. It comes from multiple areas, one of them being inflammation, high homocysteine, stress. But when I sit down with cardiologists and I, and I, and I try to train them on, on how to take better care of their patients, they look at me like a deer in the headlights because they're, they're not trained in, in how nutrition or how hormone levels affect the lining of the artery. This is why I documented marathon runners and triathletes that all of a sudden, out of the blue, these extremely fit people had heart attacks. Why did that happen? Why did that happen, folks? And that's, that's what we're going to focus on here. Every heart patient is biochemically unique. All right, now think about this. 40,000 women die from breast cancer every year. 500,000 die from heart attacks with the first sign being sudden death but nobody's talking about women's heart disease. So I am in contact with some cardiology clinics because a few years ago when I wanted to bring this program in to help people, nobody listened to me, but now I'm bringing the program in to show them how to make money, and all of a sudden I'm a visionary. Isn't it funny how that works out? I'm learning the game as I get a little older. So what we're going to do is show you some of the reasons for heart disease, okay, something that, that you could think about and understand that the information your doctors have, your primary care doctors and, and the cardiologists are not looking at nutrition. Nutrition plays a big part in heart disease. Your hormone levels play a big part in heart disease. And everybody's biochemically unique. And here's what I want you to remember, folks, okay? Remember this. If you elevate your insulin levels with simple carbohydrates or injected insulin, insulin is a growth hormone and it blocks your arteries really fast. It elevates inflammation, causes a lot of damage to your body. So by adding more fat to your diet, your body, you will actually be protecting yourself from heart disease. And this information is out there and this is what I'm talking about. The, the, the cholesterol lowering drugs have been nothing. I mean, Google cholesterol myths. The cholesterol lowering drugs did nothing but damage us and got us all drinking the Kool-Aid thinking that cholesterol was bad. Cholesterol is needed. It surrounds every lipid bilayer in every cell of the body. And they got us thinking cholesterol was bad, had us lowering our cholesterol, which was causing brain and heart damage. Anyway, now you can turn that around by asking the tough questions. And here's a little riff on, on heart disease that I want you to think about. What actually blocks the arteries? around the heart and causes you to have a heart attack. I just mentioned elevated insulin is a growth hormone. Hypercoagulability, your blood gets thick and causes sheer stress. The lining of your arteries is called the endothelial lining. Okay, when your heart beats, it's equal to lifting 70 pounds off the ground one foot. That's called ejection fraction. I measured this in patients. When your heart beats and that blood flies through the aorta, this is the aorta, and it hits the artery, it could shear a little piece of uh, endothelial lining off and then your body repairs that with a protein. Okay, your body repairs that with uh, like spackle on a wall. That's what's causing the blockage of the artery, not cholesterol, not, not smoking. Low testosterone, we always hear about, oh my God, testosterone is causing heart disease. Well, testosterone, if your testicles release uh, eight to 10 milligrams a day and some guy is shooting 200 milligrams, of course he's gonna get hypercoagulability and he's gonna throw a blood clot. In reality, if you low dose testosterone, testosterone keeps all the arteries dilated. Okay, it keeps the arteries dilated around the heart. It's very important for an older guy to keep his arteries dilated because the testosterone, when it's optimized, will release nitric oxide and keep the, keep the ar ar arteries dilated. It's, it's, it's very, very important. So if, you, if, if, a, if a man's testosterone range at 50 or 60 goes from 200 to 1,000 and he's under 500, it could actually cause damage to his heart. So if he has a savvy physician or goes to the Russ Scala YouTube channel, he'll understand that if he optimizes his testosterone, he's going to protect his heart and the brain for the future. I mean, folks, this information is out there. You could Google it on PubMed. It's, it's not rocket science. So we also know that elevated estrogen can cause problems, low growth hormone. Oh my God, we're talking about growth hormone. Well, what's interesting, folks, if you go on the high fat diet and you go on the ketogenic diet or you go on intermittent fasting, you lower blood sugar and insulin and release growth hormone and it protects your heart and your brain. All right. Now, again, try to get, try to get people to understand that you don't need to eat three meals a day. They're not going to believe you. Try to understand, to tell people that you don't need carbohydrates in your diet physiologically they're going to think you're crazy. But you could drill down on this and understand and plug these things in 
to your program so you could better take care of yourself or your family members. And lastly, obviously, adrenaline. Adrenaline, when you're in the flight or flight mode, like when I was a paramedic on the SWAT team, if I stayed in that job, I definitely would, would have had a heart attack because I was abusing alcohol. And um, then I moved over to triathlons and racing I thought was healthy and I was even damaging my heart even more. more. So I had a, I sort of immersed myself in, in two different fields. What I learned over the years is by looking at patients in the street, in the hospital, training with doctors, that everybody needs a program that's only customized to you. And you're going to have to drill down on this, folks. You're going to have to become the CEO of your own health because you're not going to get this information from your doctor. And remember, there's something called icon intimidation. Most of us, when we get sick, we want to walk into the doctor's office thinking we're going to get help. But you've got to realize that doctor's office, that pristine institution, I don't care whether it's a Mayo Clinic or some large center, their first goal is to make money. And they've got to treat everybody the same way. Okay? And pharmaceutical companies want to come out with that next due drug, like the cholesterol lowering drug, to make a profit. Who's there to look out for you? So what you got to do is drill down on this information, keep a logbook, get some baseline blood work done, see what we're doing on our YouTube channel, and ask the tough questions. Don't just put your life or your family member's life in somebody else's hands and let them lead you down the road. They're not trained. All right, folks? Talk to you soon.